Hello, and welcome to this Angular tutorial. Today, we're diving into one of the most essential topics for forms, validation and error messages. We'll take a basic form and provide several validation messages to help guide users. Plus, we'll level up with additional checks like email validation and even visual feedback for the form status as a whole. All right, let's get started. Okay, here's the form that we'll be using in this tutorial. Right now, neither of these fields are required, but we wanna make both of them required before the user can successfully submit the form. And we wanna show some validation messages to provide visual feedback to the user when these fields are invalid so that they know what they need to do. Okay, let's look at how we do this. Let's open up the TypeScript for our form component. This is where the code for this form exists. Here we have a form that's created using a form group from the Angular Forms module. Inside of this form group, we have our two controls, one for the name field and another for the email address. And these are created using form controls, also from the forms module. This form group and these form controls allow us to programmatically interact with and monitor the state of our form and its controls. Now let's look at the template so we can understand how this is all used. Okay, to wire up our form group, we use the form group directive here and we pass it our form variable. Then nested within this group, we provide our inputs where we use the form control name directive. And that's all it takes to make this an Angular form. Okay, now let's add some validation. First, let's make our name field required. For this, we add a validators property to the options on this form control. Then, we can use the validators class, also from the forms module. From this class, we can use the required property. Okay, that's it. This field is now required as far as Angular is concerned. Now we can use this required status to provide some validation in the template. Let's start by adding a div with an error class. This class provides basic styles for our error messages. Then let's add the message we wanna show when this field is invalid. Your name is required. Okay, now comes the cool part. By default, this error class starts out hidden, but we can provide a visible class when we wanna show it. So let's bind this visible class when the name field is invalid. We can access this invalid state using our form group, then accessing its controls object, and then our name control. This is how we get access to this control. Here, we can access the status of this control. So we wanna add this class when the control is invalid. Okay, let's save and check this out now. Okay, well, it looks like it's working. Since this field is required, when no value has been added, it's invalid, so we see it right out of the gate. Then as soon as we add content, it's no longer invalid, so the message is hidden. Now, that's cool, but we probably don't wanna show it when the user hasn't even interacted with it yet, right? Well, we can fix this pretty easily. With Angular Forms, we have access to a touched state. The control will be in the state once a user has interacted with the control and then blurred it. So 
we want to add this check to our condition. Also, while we're doing this, I don't like that we have to repeat this form.controls.name for each of these conditions here. So I'm going to add a template variable with a let block for this. There, now I can shorten these to just name instead. Okay, let's save and try this again. Okay, that's better. Now we're not seeing it initially. Then if we interact with it in blur, it displays. Then if we enter content, it hides again. So that's better. Now the email field is a little different. Not only does it need to be required, but it also needs to validate that it's a properly formatted email address. Well, this is pretty easy too. Let's start by adding the validators property to this control. But this time we're going to make this an array. The first validator we need will be the required validator. Then this class also provides an email validator, which is cool because this means that we don't need to create it from scratch, right? Okay, so that's how you add multiple validation checks on a single Angular form control. Now let's add some messages in the template. First, let's add a template variable for this field like we did for the name field. Now let's add an error div again. This message is a little more complicated than the name since we need to show one message when the user has only interacted and blurred the field. And then we need to show a different message when they've added some content, but it's not in the correct email format. So let's add an if condition. Then let's use our email variable. Then we'll call a has error function. Then we'll pass this function the error we want to check against. In this case, we'll check if it's required. Okay, when it's required, we'll display your email is required. Now let's add an else. In here, we'll display, please enter a valid email address. Okay, so those are the messages that we want to show. Now let's control when we show them. Let's bind the visible class again, checking for the invalid and touch statuses of the control. Okay, let's save and try this now. Okay, it's properly hidden to start. Then we can trigger the required message. Then when we have an invalid email, it displays the invalid email message. And then if we make it a valid format, the message is hidden. Pretty cool stuff, right? And there's still more, a lot more actually, but I'm going to point out one more cool thing here. Let's say we want to make it a little more apparent when the form is invalid. Let's say we want to change this border around the form to red when the overall form group is invalid. Well, just like with the individual form controls themselves, we can monitor the overall form validity and touch status. Let's see how. So we already have an invalid class that we can bind to this container. This class will make the border red. Now we can access the invalid state directly on the form group itself. Likewise, 
We can do the same with the touched state. And that's it. Let's save and see it in action. Okay, everything looks normal to start, right? But now, once we trigger an error, this border turns red. That's pretty cool stuff, right? Okay, now you've learned how to add required validation, dynamic error messages, and even group level visual feedback for your forms. With these techniques, you can build forms that are not only functional, but also user-friendly and intuitive. Keep experimenting and apply these concepts to make your Angular form stand out. All right, until next time, thanks for watching.